So the iPhone 12 Pro has some amazing video capabilities such as shooting in 4K at 60 frames per second in the HDR profile, shooting 10-bit, which means there's a ton of color information. It looks great on your phone, it looks great on social media, but then what happens when you want to import it into DaVinci Resolve and start to make a video with it? Well, if you're watching this video, maybe you've already tried and you realize there may be a few hiccups along the way trying to get the footage to look how it did on the phone. Now I've read online and there's a lot of people having problems with this and I also personally spoke to the senior advisors at the head of the video department at Apple. What I took away from it was the correct input color space and input gamma, which is super important. But once I found out those details, it wasn't really enough to get the image to where I wanted it. And it actually turns out it only comes down to a few adjustments to get the image to look amazing. And by the way, if anybody's watching this and they have any type of workflow that works better for them, or if they have any input, feel free to drop a comment, let me know, help out the community, that would be awesome. All right, without further ado, let's get started. So as you can see, if I just play this movie file, then this is what it looks like. But if I drag it into DaVinci Resolve, the clip looks really washed out and the colors just are not saturated enough. And it looks like a really terrible image, to be honest. So in order to get a great looking image, what we want to do is come up here to our nodes and add a few serial nodes. So I'm just going to add three. On our middle node here, I'm going to come over here to the open effects and scroll down to color space transform. Then you want to drag that CST on the middle node. Then up here on the right hand side under the color space transform drop down options, what we want to do is click on the input color space, push R on our keyboard, and scroll down until you see Rec 2020. That is the input color space of this footage. Next, what you want to do is come down to the input gamma, click on the drop down option, and scroll down until you see Rec 2100 HLG. Then come down to the gamut mapping method, click on that drop down arrow and select saturation compression. Now, obviously this still looks almost even more washed out than before, but there's a little bit more saturation and contrast. So now this is where I personally found out if you come to this first node, come down to the curves and select the curves. And then what you'll wanna do is pull this down and make your basic adjustments. Now, what I have found is if you pull the curve down right about like that, that creates an amazing looking image. And the reason I know this is because I compared this to SDR footage of the exact same clip. Then what you'll wanna do is add a little bit of saturation. I'm gonna just crank it up to about 58. Maybe add a little bit of color boost. I'm gonna come over here and look at our vector scope. The greens are a little saturated, so I, I could make some secondary adjustments here with the hue, saturation, and luminance curves. But for this example, what I wanna do is show you guys what this looks like compared to an SDR clip. So in case you guys didn't know this, but on a Mac, if you come into the folder where your iPhone footage is and you right click on it, scroll down to the bottom where it says encode selected video files. Let's go ahead and click on that and it will pop up with an option of some different settings that you can encode this file as. So for example, I'm just going to select H264 2160p. Then I'm going to click continue. It takes about a few seconds for this to encode. And then what you'll do is you'll see this pop up in the folder. And then briefly, it just takes time. And then what you'll see is a little duplicate with a number one next to it. So what you'll want to do is come back into our timeline. Let's go ahead and drag that encoded media file into our timeline. The only downside about doing that encoding is that when you encode it, it creates an 8-bit file. So you're not working with 10-bit anymore. This original clip here is our 10-bit file. So if I click back and forth at these two, you can see how identical they are. The shadows are a little bit deeper on the HDR clip, which you can simply change with the curves. But as you can see here, I'm going to jump into our color tab. And now I'm going to show you guys the difference on our waveforms here. So you can see the shadows are kind of crushed a little bit here. So I can always just bring this up. And if I jump back and forth between these two, you can see you yield very similar results. Now I'll show you on the vector scope what it looks like when you bring in the SDR clip and the HDR clip, very similar. So the only difference between these two though is, is that you're working with a 10-bit file. So there's a little bit more room for adjustment. There's a little bit more color information. One thing I've noticed though, when I was pixel peeping is that if I zoom in really far up into detail and show you guys maybe just like some edges here. You'll see some artifacts on the ridge here. It's kind of weird and funky. Then when you jump over to the SDR clip, it looks a little bit more compressed and it looks a little bit more clean, but maybe just not as sharp. So now that's the regular clip like that. You can see the artifacts here. But then I click back to the SDR clip 
it looks a little bit smoother. So this is gonna be kind of a toss up for you guys. It looks like there's a little bit more detail. I mean, I'm really zooming in on this, but if you guys look closely, you can see the difference between the two. Hopefully YouTube compression isn't complete shit. So you can see what the difference is. Now, in case you guys were wondering if you need to make any adjustments to the HDR clip, I like to work underneath the CST in a lot of cases. So what you could do is just do your main primaries on this first node. So like I showed you the saturation, the color boost. And then if you really wanted to, you could come up here, select some white balance, maybe like that, which changes it just a tiny amount. As you can see, the temperature and the tint have changed. So the reason I made this third node is if you need to make any creative look adjustments or maybe even some parallel nodes, you can just continue to work on throughout this node tree. And the last thing I'm going to say about this is I would just prefer never to use any sharpening as you cannot control the sharpening on the phone. I make videos on visual effects, transitions, color grading, and also some vlogs. So if you guys wanna see more of that, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. That would be greatly appreciated. It does help. Thanks for watching. I will catch you guys later in my next video.